welcome to the We're Not Stump podcast. I'm your host, Mike Boland, and I'm a congenital amputee of the right hand. In this show, I will interview other amputees and allow them to tell you their incredible life stories. I'll also feature family members of amputees and others who support the amputee community, all in an effort to discuss the challenges and triumphs of those living with limb loss. So stick around and listen to inspirational stories and find out why we say we're not stumped. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the We're Not Some podcast. My name is Mike Bowen. Today, we're going international. Very excited about this. We have Lowe's Booth on. Lowe's is a content creator, a comedian, an actor, a mom of two young boys, and she's from Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. Lowe's, thank you so much for being on the We're Not Some podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. We, we spent about, uh, I can tell you right now, 21 minutes talking be- <laughs> between us, you know, sharing some <laughs> stories, and it was so fun. I got to know a little bit more about you, but I'd like the listeners to know, and we always start the We're Not Stumped podcast with a segment we call In Your Own Words. So I'd love to hear your story. Yeah, amazing. So I think the most important story for me to tell right now is uh, probably actually began when I was about 14 or 15. So I was born with uh, a hand difference, a hand and foot difference. Um, I had a great upbringing. I was treated the same as my brothers. So I just learned to adapt. Um, and I loved performing. I was in musical theater. It couldn't stop me from dancing. Uh, I had so much confidence again, because I was brought up in this way that I was never treated differently. So, you know, I was on stage waving my hands around to me, Honestly, even now as a 43 year old, completely oblivious that my hands are different. I think that was, that had a huge part in playing, you know, I guess me becoming the person I am now. So I was on stage performing. I was at drama school. I was doing all of that stuff. I was singing. I was in the choirs. Um, and I loved, loved the theater. But when I was around 16, someone that I was working with in musical theatre actually said to me that you'll never, you'll always struggle to get roles because of your hands. It's going to be really quite distracting. (laughs) And this, it, it killed me. You know, I'd been actually doing short courses. My dad had paid for me to do short courses at the best, um, film, TV, acting university in Australia where Mel Gibson, Heath Ledger, all of those Hollywood guys were studying. I was doing short courses there. Um, And I invested so much of that time when I was younger in performing to then have someone turn around and say to me that, you know, you're not going to make it uh, really, really impacted me. So I gave up. I gave up on, on everything. Um, I finished high school and then, you know, I guess fast forwarding through those maybe next 10 or so years, I just floated from one industry to another. Sorry, that's my kid running it through the background. Um, Yeah, I just jumped from one thing to another. I worked in every industry you could possibly think of. Um, And I was just lost. Now that I look back as a 43 year old, I was just lost trying to figure my way through through life because I'd had that dream taken away. Uh, I then settled down. I had kids and I found myself in COVID, um, obviously out of work. I'd been working in the fitness industry and I found myself in COVID with no work, looking after kids. And I just kind of naturally fell into content creation. And I I guess I didn't realize it at the time that it was my opportunity to, you know, let out these creative kind of skills and, you know, passion that I had for creating, for being on film. And again, I didn't realize it at the time, but that's what I was meant to be doing. And the more I did that, um, the bigger it became, started building this community. We came out of COVID and I realized that I was actually in a really good position to, you know, start to follow my dreams again. The world has slowly changed. So although inclusivity on screens, on theater in Australia, still not where it should be, it's definitely changed a lot since the 90s. Uh, It's almost gone the other way where it's actually a little bit over the top where 
um, a lot of casting networks, casting companies, um, TV platforms actually have a quota for the amount of people that they need to have in that have some type of disability or First Nations. So I realized that at 40 years old, this was my opportunity to reignite this passion that I had from when I was 16. So most people would go, yeah, okay, that's awesome. I'm going to start to do a little bit of this. I didn't. I went, okay, I'm going to go all out. So I'm starting to do stand-up comedy. I've got myself an agent. I'm doing acting. I'm doing screenwriting. I'm doing screenwriting courses at university. It just kind of everything all at once. And that's where I am today. That's kind of, that brings us up to where today I'm doing just absolutely everything and running hard. And, you know, it's funny because I was chatting to uh, a comedian last week. She's in her twenties. She's been doing a lot of work on TV um, and she's had this amazing career. She has a new TV show that's about to launch on one of our biggest uh, streaming platforms. And I said to her, what you've achieved in the last 10 years, I need to now go achieve in about a year <laughs> because I'm 43 <laughs> and I need to run hard. So yeah, that's, that's yeah, my story so far. What prompted you or what was your inspiration to start the stand-up comedy? I think that's an interesting story. So it's funny because I was thinking about this the other night that it's clearly always, you know, at this time in my life, I'm assessing everything. Like, why do I do, why did I do that? Why am I doing this? And what is my why in life? And I realized that what I want to be doing in life is performing. What do I need? I need to have that acceptance. I need to feel valued. And I realized that if I look through everything that I've done over the years, I've always been on some type of stage. So something you may not have actually dug up about me is that in this period of me trying to find myself, uh, I was a Zumba instructor. So I was on stage teaching Zumba. Uh, Then in one period of my life when I felt a bit lost, I decided to become a bodybuilder. So wow. I was on stage um, accepting awards to be a bodybuilder. And then coming out of COVID, creating you know this comedic content, I realized that I probably need to be a bit funnier. So <laughs> then I went and studied stand-up comedy and that has then just opened the door to so much more. Um, so everything happens for a reason. Yeah. It's just it's just jumping. Oh, the most amount of, um, I guess, learning that has happened in my life has happened in the last year. And it's all just come from saying yes, just saying yes. And things that I would have been scared of, just letting go of that and just jumping at everything. Now, in your comedy uh, it, it, and through your life, is it a reflection of your life and being a little self-deprecating of the situation you've lived with, or is it a broader <laughs> thing? If you don't mind me asking. No, no. It's funny actually, because when I first started stand up comedy, I thought I'm going to get up and talk about being a mom because that's what all of my content is online. My content, my yes. community and my online brand is yes. mom comedy. And that was kind of fun. But then I realized that actually if I get up and tell jokes about myself, that is the most unique type of content because as you would know from the comedy circuit, you tend to hear a lot of the same jokes. Uh, In Sydney, it's a whole lot of young people talking about dating apps, you know, swearing a lot. Whereas I have a very unique perspective and nobody else can actually tell the jokes that I'm teaching. So that was a learning experience because as a comedian, when you get up and you were telling jokes about yourself, it's really, it's really important not to be super self-deprecating and to actually get the audience on side really quickly to understand that it's okay to laugh at me. You know, it's okay. It's a safe space not to feel sorry, but to laugh at me. And then once you get them on side, then it's just, it's so much fun. Like at the end of my set, I actually read out a whole bunch of troll comments that I get online. Yeah. And one of my favorite ones is um, from Swifty Fan 90 And she goes on to say, 
you know, laws, I love your content, like really nice, but your hands are super distracting. Can you please hide them in your videos? And so I finish off the show going, okay, so I've created something new. This is especially for Swifty Fan 90. I hit play on the YMCA, go down, go YMCA with my hands behind the back. And I did that the other night and it was the biggest laughs I had had and it was just so good. So, yeah, it's really important that, especially because, you know, I see myself as an example for, you know, a community of incredible people. I don't want to be self-deprecating. It's um, it's just a different different type of comedy. Yeah, that makes sense. But it, it, it is fun. It, the fact that you represent something so unique, I think it's fantastic. And, and speaking of that, you have a podcast, too, that I want to talk about. The Hiding in the Bathroom podcast. Tell us about that. <laughs> and there's going to be links to all of your content, all your platforms, I should say, in the description of, the, of my podcast. But I'd love to hear a little bit more about this. No, so through creating content for mums so and I guess just like a little side note one of the things I love about what I've created online is that I've actually created mum life comedy That's my great. content has nothing to do with my hands yeah and this is this is a really important part of my brand um I I don't talk about my hands very much and it's not because I'm embarrassed like I'm absolutely not it's just not that important. Yeah. So a big part of what I do is actually show up and create mum life comedy and just be me because I think that that's actually one of the best things I could possibly do. Uh, and it puts a lot of people off because they're like, well, hang on, what's going on with your hands and why are you not talking about it? Uh, so through creating this mum life content, I realized that I was building up this amazing community of mums and I didn't, I just created content because it was fun and I was bored as anything <laughs> during COVID. So I started creating content and then started building up this following. I think that it's like uh, 35,000 now on Facebook. Yeah, um, it is. Very, very good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then like just, you know, an amazing bunch of women um, and dads. Man, I have a handful of dads. I love them because they always drop in the dad jokes. Um, <laughs> and it's incredible. And I thought I just needed to find another way to um, broaden that community and, you know, help service them in another way. So I thought, you know, hey, I like making my life difficult and adding to my workload. Why not do a podcast as well? That's It's excellent that you did that. I. I, I watched some of the videos you had up there. They're, it's so funny. In, in this one in particular, you were talking about like your son. Okay, get ready. I am ready, mom. And you're like, no. Your whole thing was like, no, you're not. You know what I mean, because you know. <laughs> you have two yeah. boys, correct? Yes. And one of yes. the things I learned while we were having our, our pre-conversation was that uh, one of your young sons is also a limb difference like yourself. So it's interesting perspective for me as we talked earlier. To think that not only you, you can talk about your own life, but you also as the mother of someone like that, I think it's kind of fascinating. What is it like to raise a child like that? Or what's this, what was the story there when you first found out? Uh, yeah, look, it was, it was one of the hardest times in my life, hands down. And actually, I'm writing a script for a TV show at the moment. And I wrote, I finished writing a script for a particular scene of the moment that I found out and I had actors perform it the other day. And it still is really, really hard. Uh, even though I look at him now and he's just the most capable, most <laughs> incredible, outgoing, very outgoing child. Um, <laughs> that time was still really hard. So it was really conflicting because as someone who has grown up with, you know, unique hands and hasn't cared about it, it's not a big deal, you know, whatever. Um, and then finding out because, you know, when we had my first son, he wasn't impacted. So mm -hmm. I think there was a moment when I looked at um, his scans that I, I thought, oh, I wonder if it passed on. No, nope, he's fine. So at that moment, I was just like, okay, cool. It's not passed on. So I was at the, I think it was a 12 week scan. I was there by myself. 
because it wasn't a big deal. My husband wasn't there because it was second baby. Who cares? You know, you just go on through the motions. <laughs> and uh, she didn't even pick up on it. The lady that was doing the scan, I actually noticed that you could just see two toes on each each foot. And I, she then kind of panicked. She was rushed out of the room and replaced by like the head sonographer. And, and it was really hard to tell, but he said, I think that all you can see at this point is just one finger on each hand. And again, I was really conflicting because as someone that had so much, you know, was brought up with so much confidence and didn't care, um, you know, what have I done? Like I've, I've passed it on. Um, he was going to have a lot less functionality than me. I, I, I didn't, I did not know how he was going to cope with life. We honestly thought that he was going to need assistance throughout his life because it's just one, no opposing thumb, just just one finger on each hand. And uh, as I mentioned to you before, I didn't realize that this is actually standard practice. When you have a scan and an abnormality comes up, the next thing they say to you is you need to consider whether or not you're going to continue pregnancy. Mm. So I went in there for a 12 week routine scan without my husband just going, yeah, and walked out just completely, completely numb. So yeah, it was a really, a really hard time in my life because I had to pretend I wasn't pregnant because we just didn't know, like, we just didn't know, like, as a lot yeah. of other parents, my parents didn't even know at all because there was not that technology then. Yeah. Uh, but I had to pretend I wasn't pregnant because we didn't know what we were doing. And that was very hard because I was very sick and I was throwing up and eating Big Macs every <laughs> five minutes. Um, but then gave birth to him. Um, and I remember and I tell him, a lot when i gave birth to him he came out the first thing i did was just grabbed his his toes i call them we call them little sausages <laughs> and uh, i grabbed those little toes and and kissed his feet and it was the most the most beautiful moment and even now as an eight-year-old if i'm ever sad he comes up to me and he lifts his foot up he goes do you want to kiss my little oh. sausage <laughs> Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> and I know you were talking too, as, as you were brought up, you were brought up, sister and brother, is that correct? You have I have two brothers. Two brothers, I yeah. apologize. Yeah. And you were all brought up the same, I guess. You know, no one was treated any different. Is that something you've adopted as well as you bring up two boys? Yeah. And, and what is that like for you? I knew from the moment I gave birth to him that we were going to, that I understood that the reason that I am the way I am was because of my upbringing, hands yeah. down. And I actually used to do a lot of work with parents who had were pregnant with children with limb differences. And that was something that I always spoke about. It's really hard um, when you're a new parent, you only know what you know, and yeah. you don't know how to go through that period and what you should be doing. But I realized because of you know, my life, that that was the way that we wanted to bring him up. So whenever he would start a new preschool or school, I would always say to them, when he struggles, let him struggle so many times to do something, let him do it again, let him do it again, let him do it again. If he's still not getting, getting it, give him a little bit of assistance, then let him keep going. And yeah, like he's incredible. Ironically, his reading is terrible, but his writing is immaculate. <laughs> That's it, it, there's so many similarities as we talked earlier. It just seems like my parents had the same perspective on my life, and it, it's great to see that you have that. And I'm sure everything's going to be fantastic for both of your children. So, and I we're talking about where you're at now in life, and I was going to read something that I read about you as far as in your bio because I thought this was fascinating. Lowe's believes that Australia is very much behind the rest of the world when it comes to diversity in the media and the arts. Hence her goal for 2023 to be part of the movement that is slowly changing that for the better. And I think that's fascinating. I, it's really interesting to think about, uh, I'm not there, you're not here, so we don't know necessarily uh, you know, maybe the pros and cons of each place, but you're doing so much moving forward. You're, you're doing the acting, you're, you're writing your screenplay. How is that going for you? And how, what is your outlook for the rest of the year and beyond? It's incredible. I think that, the more I'm doing, the more I'm seeing that this is all really possible. So when, when, you know, you read out that bio about 
the lack of inclusivity, I guess, versus Australia versus somewhere like the UK. I was always blown away when, so my husband's from Surrey in the UK, just outside of London. So we spent a lot of time there. And there will be like a lot of panel shows where there is a host with, um, you know, a similar limb difference to yours, or <laughs> there would be a host in a wheelchair and they weren't there as a disabled, disabled, you know, personality or a character. They were, they were just there. Um, yeah, I like and, that. and that, and it's, it's absolutely incredible. And it just, it honestly blew my mind. And this yeah. happened many years ago. It's always been in the back of my mind. Like I'd love to be, I'd love to be part of that movement. And so although inclusivity is definitely getting better in Australia, it's still nowhere near where it needs to be. And I have this theory that we went from like no no inclusivity at all to almost going a little bit over the top. So, uh, you know, I, I think I mentioned before the government, when they do any type of casting, they have a quota where they need to yeah. submit out to all the different communities in the groups. So it's almost gone a little bit over, but when will we get to the point where there doesn't need to be that category that everybody will go to a casting and be treated the same way? You know what I mean? Just like, why is it a big deal? So I, the piece that I'm writing now is I'm creating a show. Uh, you know, I, I sometimes, I still struggle a little bit because I feel a little bit arrogant saying that the show is about my life. However, I also keep telling myself that it is actually a really important story. Yeah. You know, uh, a girl with no fear, like think of the little girl from Little Miss Sunshine, you know, who just wanted to go on and, and perform and didn't care about what everybody felt about her. That's that's how my character starts off, to then a 43-year-old mum who's dancing on TikTok Obviously, it's going to be a comedy drama. <laughs> uh, and then even since then, like all the funny stuff that that happens to me, you know, because I'm considered, this is my whole thing, because I'm a considered a disabled actor, I um, I was cast in a, an ad for, for the government recently. Oh, wow. And they emailed me and said, can you let us know, you know, what type of AIDS do you need in the workplace? And I had this whole conflicting moment of, what do I tell them? I've never needed, I've never needed anything. Yeah. But I, it also paid really good money and I didn't want to lose it. So yeah. then I'm typing, typing with my completely abled hand into Google, what does a person with a hand difference need in the office place? And then I emailed them and said, uh, maybe this and maybe that. <laughs> and then my next thought is I'm now going to have to show up to this ad, uh, to this, um, to this shoot. And they're going to expect me to be a lot more disabled than I am. So I'm going to have to drop my handbag and my phone and put on this whole act because I want the money. So it's just like, it's one thing after another. We just did a really weird place at the moment, you know, yeah. of how we perceive disability. And that's why I'm saying like, when we can get to a place where it's not a big deal, you're just normal. Like that's where we need to be. So I can't remember where the question started off, but. <laughs> no, we're talking about your screenplay and yeah. where you're going to be going. And th this is great. I didn't realize you were doing commercials. I, I did know that you were on uh, NCIS Sydney. It's on your IMDb. And I think that's exciting. So you're, you're starting <laughs> to get to be that person that, and I think you said you were 14 at the time when somebody told you, maybe discouraged you, but now you're that person who's going to continue to move forward and probably pave the way for other people. That sounds very exciting. How do, how do you feel about that? It's honestly very surreal. I was doing, I was actually studying another screenwriting course on the weekend at NIDA, which is National Institute of Traumatic Arts, again, where Mel Gibson, you know, Kate Blanchett, Baz Luhrmann, he was actually there on the weekend who did wow. Elvis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where it, it's, it's one of the most prestigious uh, universities for the arts in Australia. I was there studying on the weekend and I stood in this corner, all glass windows and looking out to the main street and I was looking down and there was a bus stop down below and I just had this moment of looking down at my 16-year-old self when I was there studying. I think it was around 16 or 15 in the school holidays and thinking, 
I could not imagine that I'd be here 43 actually pursuing this dream again. So it's very surreal, uh, but I've never been so motivated in my life. And I think the reason that motivation is consistently there is because the more action I keep taking, the more I do, the more I see that this is actually all possible. So, you know, you were talking about what I'm creating at the moment, which is, you know, this drama comedy about my life starting here and now here and all the funny stuff that's gone along. Then once I've completed that, the next thing I actually want to create is there's a there's a need with all the streaming services at the moment, the content they want to put out because life is hard for a lot of people now, you know, uh, our rates, interest rates and this and that have gone up. The content they're asking for right now is just feel good content. Yeah. So what I want to create is actually a show about a group of mums because, you know, that's where my comedy originates from is, is mum comedy you know, a group of different type of mums going through different struggles. However, two of those characters may have a disability, but that's not the purpose of them being there. It's more, it needs to be more of a, just a one dimensional disability character that we normally see on screens, but more of, you know, uh, what does that character go through? Like they go through normal things in life. So the -hmm. fact that they're on screen is not because you know, their story is being disabled. It's actually not even going to touch on that at all. It's because maybe they're like the bitchy mum at school or maybe others of that. It's just a normal character. So that's then my next project after what I'm doing now. That's pretty exciting. And that, uh, the way, as you were describing it, I think to myself, do people think that we look at ourselves that way? And it's like, no, I just live my life every day. I don't think about it. As we talked earlier, I don't think about having one hand. You don't think about your limb differences. It's like, we. so it seems like I like how you're going forward about this is just a character. They may happen to have a disability, but this is just a character. I like your thinking on that. So I can't wait to see that in progress as you continue to move forward on that. Yeah, thank you. As I said, I don't like my life uh being too easy I like it. at the moment I'm just taking on so many things so but it, it, it's great and it's it's honestly just such an exciting time and I know my why and my why is that I need to make a difference and then you know I've got my son who's watching everything I do sure and there is nothing more important than me set an example and yeah. making a way for him for when he does want to follow his dreams as well that yeah. there's going to be that opportunity there you spoke about this earlier. I didn't ask you about this, but I'd like to do it now, and I hope you don't mind. You were saying that you yourself have a limb difference on either one foot or the other, maybe both feet. It, it, did I catch that wrong, or is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, is it both? Or is, both I'm sorry? Yeah, both feet, yeah. Oh, both feet, okay. And uh, you were, as you said earlier, you were in the an industry where you were really more in, in athletic, I guess is a good way to say it. And that never stopped you either, I would take it. No, uh, yeah, I worked in the fitness industry for for many years. Um, I was doing bodybuilding. I had to wow. lift super heavy weights, yeah. and just like with anything, you know what it's like. You you just learn to adapt. And um, I'm sure you feel the same. But it's almost like when you know we were talking before about there's a reason, right? And I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be born with ten figures. I'll be honest because you know, this is, this is giving me a lot of purpose in life. Um, but you know, when there is an obstacle as there can be in our lives, it gives you even more drive to actually go, no, I'm going to do this. So, you know, if you think of me with not that many fingers to be able to grasp onto a heavy weight and have that lack of grip, then I'm just going to find a way to do it. And so, so I did. Um, and yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's fantastic. And I, I was telling you earlier, I've only had a couple other congenital difference people on the podcast too, as a matter of fact. So I do want to ask a little bit about your growing up. You talked about your two brothers and, and as far as like within your own family unit, you were treated very equally. How was it growing up, going to school? Sounds like no problem for you all about the attitude but i'd love to hear your thoughts I really on that. yeah absolutely i really really deeply believe that it all comes down to the attitude and the confidence i think that when a child is you know is not confident 
um, and is, is very shy, uh, it's just really sad. I, I feel like they're kind of put in a position where they're an easy target. But I think that I walked into school, like I probably went like this yeah. and, yeah. uh, you know, I just, I was never, I was never a target. Funnily enough, the only time I have ever been bullied during my school years was in year 11. So in Australia, that is the year before you leave high school to then go into uni. Okay. So I was, I was probably, I think it was 17, maybe nearly 18. And at that point, I was just like, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. You're bullying me now? But yeah, I was never bullied. And I think it's yeah. it was just, again, it just came down to confidence. I wasn't I wasn't an easy, easy target. Um, and and my my son is the same. Like he's he's friends with everyone. He uh won uh the school's like got talent competition. Oh nice. Then he was even then he was even more popular. He was doing slam dunks in this video and it won. And um <laughs> so yeah, he's he's just he's super outgoing and and that definitely makes all the difference. And Look, I've met people who have been complete opposite. And again, there's there's no judgments. We, you know, we live our life in certain ways, but I've met people who are, are very self-conscious and yeah. um, are in a lot of pain True. all the time. And I think it, it's a lot of it can be mindset as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's no, that's no judgments. Everybody's True. life is different. We're talking about that before. There's no right or wrong. Um, but yeah, I truly believe the more independence, independence you can give a child the more confidence they're going to be and the more out there they can be and just themselves living their best life, the less they're going to be a target. Um, and that confidence will take you through to when you're a 43 year old mother dancing on TikTok. Not caring. <laughs> I tell you what, that is build up a shield for the trolls because I never got bullied, but I certainly get trolled now. Yeah, and I yeah. Love it. Whenever I get a troll comment, I'm like, oh, yes, I needed some extra material for my set on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I've had some comments. It's like, well, that's an interesting perspective. I never thought of that, but you, you do you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's like I would have never thought of that. So mm -hmm. let's uh, let's talk about the future. I know we did already to a certain extent, but what else are you looking forward to as you move forward with all your projects? Oh, goodness. Uh, so I actually have Sydney Fringe Festival, which is just uh, a big festival coming up in September. Um, so that's super exciting. I'm partnering with another comedian. We have that coming up. Uh, obviously, I'm working on the script for the show. That's going to be very consuming because we're submitting that to one of the streaming platforms in Australia. And then once I jump off that, it's going to be then creating something else. Um, lots of study just at the moment, my thing is just to meet and chat to as many people as possible. And I'm just learning more and more every day um, and doing so much more comedy. I, It's funny. I never imagined that I'd love stand-up comedy as much as I, I would, it, but it makes sense now. You know, as I was saying to you before, like the idea of like, I'm on stage, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, I'm on stage, but you know, when I get up and talk, about my you know do my comedy set and again like i'm this person who's not self-deprecating but just showing yeah it's cool and i watch yeah. all these people's faces and their smiles i'm like i've just impacted another 20 people you know what i mean yeah. i've just shown another 20 people so my goal and my mission and my future is about doing it to a much broader a much broader audience if i can be on tv being myself um, which is even more important rather than being, sure. hey, I'm a person with them, just being myself in a capacity, a capacity of acting or creating, then that's my job done. So that's that's my goal. How that will happen in one way or another, it's going to happen. Uh, but that's what all my energy is going towards at the moment. Well, I don't see any way that it's not going to happen because you have determination, you have you have everything you need to move forward and make it happen. And I just thank you so much for being on the We're Not Stump podcast. And if you want to follow Lowe's, I'm going to have all the links in the description of both the podcast and on YouTube. But for maybe some people that are just listening, if you, you want to say some of your platforms right now that where you can find a little bit more information about you? Yeah, sure. So I'm on Facebook. If you just search Loz Booth, L-O-Z 
B for Bob, double O T H. Uh, you'll see me. There's there's not many of me. It's a no. pink background. Uh, yes. Then Instagram is Loz underscore Booth underscore. <laughs> TikTok is the official Loz Booth. So I thought that made me sound a little bit more important. <laughs> and YouTube, I think if you just search Loz Booth, uh, yeah, you you'll find me there. And I think that's every single platform. Um, but if you'd like, I'll get my son to come and say hello. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Alistair, quickly come and say hello. So you're crushing this... it on all those platforms, by the way. So it's a oh, pleasure to see you. It's so fun much. to see. So this is my son. This is a recording podcast. So don't do any of your crazy, silly stuff, but you can <laughs> wave and say hello to everybody. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm going to look away from the camera for a second and look at you. Oh, hey, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for being on. And what's your name? My name is Alistair. Alistair, okay. So what are you doing right now? What are you doing today? I am I am playing on the iPad. Oh wow, I wish I was doing that. That sounds I shouldn't say that. I'm having a great time interviewing your mom. That, <laughs> but it, yeah, we're having a good time talking. I hear uh you're having a good time. Oh, bye. Sorry. bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was awesome. <laughs> we, had, we had a surprise guest. We had a surprise guest on the We're Not Stump podcast. I always love to do that. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you so much for having me on. It, it was such a pleasure. I, I love that we got to have a little chat beforehand as well, um, which is so nice getting to know, get to know you. And um, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Hosted by Mike Bowler. If you want to be a guest on the program, reach out to Mike at his email address, mike at mikebolin.com. This podcast is produced by One Hand Man Productions. If you are looking to start your podcast, go to onehandmanproductions.com.